Where do you keep the litter box? This week in full-time RV life, we're going to answer all of your questions about traveling and living in an RV with our little Italian Greyhound, Gracie. And the king of the household, Jasper. And we're gonna share with you our favorite pet items for the RV. And a few things that we had no idea about when we first started RVing with pets that you might find helpful too. I'm Tammy and this is my husband Scott. We are two artists who when faced with mounting health challenges decided life's way too short. So we sold our home and most of our stuff to move into a home on wheels. And along with Gracie and Jasper, we've hit the road full time in search of new landscapes, experiences, and friends. We'd love to have you join us as we navigate our way through this RV lifestyle. And until further notice, our mission is explore, create, and inspire. This week, it's all about the fur babies. Yeah, but first we're gonna go ahead and introduce them to you. And I know Jasper is gonna run out of patience a little bit before Gracie does here. He doesn't even like it when we talk, when we talk for the camera. He doesn't like vlog voice. It makes him really mad. Jasper came to us when he was just a little guy. He was maybe a year old and we lived up in the mountains of Colorado at about 10,000 feet and he ran across the road one day and Tammy got out of the car and tried to get him to come to us. In the middle of winter. In the middle of winter. The snow was up to here. And he wouldn't do it. About two weeks after that incident he made his way all the way to our house through the woods which was probably about three or four miles. Had no idea how he even knew where we lived. Scott blames it on me because all the animals come to me, he yeah, says. They, she's like an animal magnet. But he was very emaciated. He was fairly wild. He wasn't touchable at that point. We kind of had to trap him. And then we slowly introduced him into the family and he's been with us ever since. And little Miss Gracie is about 14 years old and she came to us when she was about seven years old. She was a mill dog rescue. If you don't know what that is, it's she was one of the breeders that lived in a cage for seven years of her life, having litters of puppies for pet stores. So we're not really a proponent of that. We're, we're all about adopt, don't shop. Being a mill dog rescue, we got to see her play on grass for the first time, bark for the first time, wag her tail for the first time, smile, smile for the first, the first time. time. I mean, before Gracie came along, we were on a non-replacement, no more, no more animals. Period. We're gonna do our thing. And anyway, I had an RV, a, a pop-up truck camper that I really, really wanted, and Tammy use that as leverage and the rest is history. He loves her. Like don't let him fool you. He is very protective over her. He's it's like his little baby girl. But we are on a non-replacement clause currently, aren't we? Right. Okay. We're both on the same page. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get to it. Everyone wants to know where do you keep the litter box? Why does everyone want to know that? We put it in the shower and we don't use a cat litter box because I have a clever trick for you if you're traveling with a cat. They make a perfect little screen for the drain to keep litter and all the other stuff from going down. That's perfect. And then I got a gorilla mat and it helps trap the litter and it fits perfect along the whole bottom of our shower and it helps it not go down the drain. We don't want litter going down the drain. And then instead of using a litter box, I have a plastic tote with a lid. It's like a 16 by 24 inch tote. I just put the lid underneath when we're stopped and when we're getting ready to move, I just snap the lid on and the litter doesn't go flying anywhere and it's super quick and easy. And nowadays they make lightweight cat litter, which is amazing for us RVers or for people who have a hard time lifting heavy cat litter. It's perfect. I'd get rid of these sliding glass doors if I could, but I still have a cat and a dog who likes to eat kitty tootsie rolls. We got to keep the doors because we close them a little bit so Gracie can't get in there, but Jasper can. You know what I'm talking about. And that's where we put the litter box. At the door and in the hallway, we use these Gorilla Grip doormat super soaker rugs 
don't worry if you're wondering about all this stuff. I'm going to put links in the description below the video. You just click on the drop down arrow. You'll see the description. You'll see the links. You will be surprised at how much dirt comes out of these things. They trap just tons of dirt and you can throw them in the wash. So I keep one at the door for all of us coming and going and it really helps keep dirt from getting in the RV. And I keep one outside the bathroom door for a second stop for Jasper's litter box paws. These are a little bit like the minkies, aren't they? He's obsessed with the minky. Have you seen the minky Betty video? That's a whole nother thing, I'll link it. And these Lippert step up step covers, they keep it from getting slippery and hot for the pet's feet and they're great at also keeping dirt out. I will put a link to that video where I showed you putting them on. It's super easy and we've had these for a year and they still look brand new. And then I found some really good ones for the inside steps because they're very, they're hazardous. It was hard to find step covers to fit our curved slanted um, steps in the RV. They're perfect. They're just enough to give us all traction when we're going up and down the steps and they also peel off with Velcro and you can wash them. A win for step covers. Highly recommend them for people and pets too. Let me show you some other really cool rugs that I think are a must have if you're RVing in general but especially with pets. Just so you know none of this is sponsored. We're just letting you know what we love and what works for us. These ruggables are great. They are thin they're easy to sweep off, vacuum off, and throw in the wash. There are two pieces. It's like a, kind of a Velcro pad. And when you've got critters, or if you're just RVing in general, that's a great thing to have. Something that's easy to clean, but warms the space up. Another favorite thing I just recently discovered on Amazon was cushion covers for the couch. You can get them in different sets and different sizes. Because her hair is hard to get out of this fabric that's on the cushions, I just throw these in the wash and it's so much easier. As soon as we started RV life, I got Gracie one of these neater feeders. They're awesome. Not only does it elevate the bowl up, but it has a catcher down below and holes so she doesn't splash and spill her food and water all over the floor. So we don't worry about it getting under the slides. We don't worry about water damage. I know it's kind of disgusting, the potty pad thing, but when we're leaving for a long day or you have a senior dog who has accidents, these come in handy. And uh, so that's one of the things we use. All right, let's take a minute to talk about what it's like to live in a campground and RV park with your pets. You don't have a yard anymore. Are you seriously wearing a poop bag in your head? I don't want to forget to take a poop bag with me out. I'm going to start calling you Poopsie. Poopsie baby. So just some things to keep in mind. If you're thinking about RVing with your pets, you now don't have a yard. So poop bags have to go wherever you are. And make sure that you keep RV parks pet friendly by picking up the poop, people. Some people don't. Don't. It's crazy. But we're very good poop picker uppers, just so you know. I'm I'm the overzealous, like super conscientious poop picker upper where I'm like making sure people know I'm gonna pick up my dog's poo. Scott's a little bit more of a shy guy, poo picker upper. Which which kind are you? Hey, what do you mean? I'm not a shy poop picker upper. I pick it up just as proudly as the next guy. I just don't like it when I forget to bring a bag with me. So I've been known to like stoop to use an old Kleenex just to get back to the camper. <laughs> and one of my other pet peeves is, you know, these folks that leave the bag of poop by the side of the trail, like I'm gonna pick it up on the way back. No, you're not. You're just gonna leave it there and forget about it. Hey, it's not like you're dropping breadcrumbs to find your way back. It's not a cairn to mark the trail. It's a poop bag. So put it in your pocket and take it with you right then and there. And I mean, if it's cold out, it makes a nice hand warmer. It won't hurt you, it's just poo. Pick it up. Having a dog that doesn't yip and yap really was one of my prerequisites. And uh, so we're lucky in that regard. Last week we were camped right next to some folks that had a 
kennel set up right outside the, the rig. And every time I go outside to do anything on the truck or the RV, those dogs were just barking up a storm. The people didn't even bother to come out. I think they were inside watching a movie or taking a nap. So again, just have a little consideration and it will go a long ways. And just keep in mind, just because we love our pets and think they're adorable and sweet and cuddly, doesn't mean everyone will. And we're now living around all different people in all different places of the country. And some people are terrified of dogs and cats. No, don't run out. Come here, Jasper. You can't just go running out the door without your harness on. No. No, you can't do that. So when we're outside with the pets, we use this pet tent because now Jasper loves to be outside. So he just chills and hangs out in there as long as we'll let him. And it folds all up into a really compact, flat bag and easy to travel with. It's lightweight and it works perfect. I've been at some campsites where there's eagles and hawks flying around and we don't we don't want him being coming their lunch so this tent's awesome. And if you're lucky a lot of campgrounds will have off-leash dog parks which are great. If your campground doesn't um, look around in the local area for off-leash dog parks that you can take them to. Something I wasn't aware of when we started RVing was a lot of RV parks actually require proof of vaccines for your pets. And some campgrounds have breed specific restrictions. So those are just things to check out and keep in mind before you travel. But if you're going to be crossing borders, you also need to look up the rules for what country you're going into. For instance, I know Canada requires a health certificate and their vaccinations up to date and you have to get them at a certain time to that date when you're crossing the border. So make sure you check out those rules before you cross any borders with your pets. We're really um, over paranoid pet parents. They're both microchipped and I highly recommend that. And then they both have, you know, their tags and their numbers, and, um, their vet info, everything. So just in case something were to happen then then we're good. A lot of folks want to know what we do to keep the animals safe when we're not here and I guess number one is we keep an eye on them. What's going on? Spying on the animals. We still use the same Arlo camera system that we used in our sticks and bricks home five years ago. We know there's a lot of newer gadgets on the market out there and I'm sure they'd be great, but these things are still working great. These ones have a little magnet on them. We take them down while we travel, and then when, when we get to where we're going, we just snap them into place. They hook up directly to our existing router, which is a PEP link, and we're gonna have a video about that coming out soon, but our, our internet has worked pretty much rock solid in the entire time that we've been full-timing. These are just video. We can see that the TV is still on, the fan's still spinning, and we can see them that they're sleeping, they're comfortable, they're not barking, they're happy, and then we know everything's okay. But we also can monitor our temperature with another device. So for temperature, we're using these little guys through a company called RV Whisper. Uh, we can get on the phone, we can take a look at sensors that we've placed in the basement and the main coach and in the refrigerator to tell us what the temperature and humidity are. We've also got sensors that work with this system that tell you if there's been a water leak and those come in real handy putting them underneath sinks and in the basement. But as far as the animals are concerned, it's these ones that we're putting in here tell us that the temperature is adequate and that animals are safe. We turn the air conditioner on a comfortable temperature. We make sure to pull down all the blinds to block the sun if it's going to be a hot sunny day. If there's any chance that the electricity is going to go out because the campground's getting overloaded because it's too hot, we're not going anywhere. We also turn off the propane and we turn off the water and if we have TV, we will turn on the TV for them so there's a little sound going on for them. What do you guys what do you guys want to watch on TV? We got Animal Planet. I know Gracie Jasper wants to watch cartoons and you want to binge watch till further notice on YouTube. And by the way, people are asking us all the time how they can support us. 
just share our videos with everybody you know. One of the gadgets that we really want to get but we haven't done it yet is a keypad that goes on the front door that you can actually give the code out to a neighbor or a friend and or in the case of an emergency you can call back to the campground and have them come check it out. But for now if we're going to be gone long enough we will leave the key with a neighbor, somebody that we trust and call them up if we feel concerned. So if you're getting an RV and you've got a cat or a small critter with you, look for secret open cavity cubbies in the RV that you might not know are there. In our first RV, we had all these cub secret cubby places that he could get into. Up above the fireplace, there was gaps and like this big where he could get into the back of the fireplace. We would have had to tear down a wall. And then under the steps where they put the shoe cubby, there was an open back there too. That's just squirrels throwing nuts on the roof. Scott made these like cardboard cutouts that fit perfectly with Velcro and we blocked all that. So you just have to kind of look around because you don't want your animal getting stuck in the body and cavity of the RV. That would be a nightmare. Normally when we get somewhere that we're going to be staying for a week or more, I will Google the nearest veterinarian clinics and emergency vet clinics in the area and I'll take screenshots on my phone of the ones that I decide have the best reviews and I also put it on the fridge on a whiteboard. This is a magnetic whiteboard. It sticks right to your fridge. It's great. You hope you'll never need to track down a vet in an emergency, but in the two years that we've been RVing, we've had two emergencies with Gracie where we did have to get her in quickly to a vet's office. So definitely find out where your vets are at in the area you're staying and keep a copy of your pet's medical records with you. Let's talk about travel days when we have to close up the RV and get them into the truck and head on out in between places. Yeah, and you remember what it was like the first time that we jumped in the truck and went somewhere? Oh, Gracie. Gracie's excited. <laughs> Jasper's hiding. It was like a circus around here. They are aware of all of the telltale signs of travel day. So the first thing that we learned is we got to get Jasper out of here before those slides start coming in. Because if you can only imagine what it looks like to him when his house is shrinking. I mean, I don't even think he would recover from PTSD <laughs> of that sort. So now we know that the first thing we do is we put his harness on, we take him out and we clip him into the passenger seat in the truck. And he's just as happy as can be to wait for us to get ready to go in the truck because that way he knows he's going with us. And the same thing goes for having a routine when we arrive at a campground. We pull in, Tammy stays in the vehicle with, with the animals while I get everything set up. And I'll grab Jasper and throw him in here and he'll be strutting his stuff like he's the king of the world. Yeah, I mean he doesn't throw him in when he puts him in kindly and nicely into the RV. <laughs> We've got a good system now, it's smooth and it just works. So if you're just starting out, it might be a little chaotic at first until everyone gets the routine down. Yeah, just give it some time. It gets better and it, I don't even think about it now. In the try beginning, and, I was so stressed. Try and do things in the same order every time. Yeah. That makes a big difference. And for the final question, how do the pets like RV life? I think they love it. Jasper took a little warming up to the idea, but now he's a total travel pro. Gracie loves, just wants to be with us. She's just happy to be wherever we are. She's she a, loves she's traveling. She's a born traveler. And we love having them because not only do we get to now share all these fun experiences with them, we get to travel the whole country and we don't worry about pet care. They go wherever we go. In next week's video, we're gonna take you back to our normal vlog schedule as we leave Maine and head to Gettysburg. And if there's anything that we missed, <laughs> just drop a comment below. This is RV Live with that's right here. Lick, licks, 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 licks. You'll notice there's different cuts because we have animals coming and going throughout the entire recording session. <laughs> Are we gonna give lickies now? Are we gonna give lickies now? It's Meowana. It says, get smoked. Rainbow trout. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> refillable catnip toy. And the cat on the picture looks like he's been using a little meow on a 